Australians are paying off their credit cards. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because there's some good news I would like to share with everyone. And I've covered this in videos before, but I thought I'd go into it in a little bit more detail today. Australians are paying off their credit cards. Well, the data is updating. The latest chart pack from the ABS has shown that we have continued to attack the personal debt. Year on year growth is now definitely far below 10%. In some, you know, I would say that is fantastic news. That is great news. Now, how is the media reporting on this? If we jump through here, we can see that news.com is saying, you know, Australian credit card debt hits the lowest level in 16 years. 16 years. Now, could this be for a few reasons? Maybe people are worried, they're concerned. So they're trying to just attack their debt while they can. Or I was talking to a neighbor yesterday. He's saving a fortune. He's really happy. But it's because he can't go out. <laughs> he can't go out. So could it also be that we, well, combined with that, people are worried, but people also have got nowhere to spend their money. So they're just attacking that credit card debt. And is then the influence of Afterpay and some of those other you know, new, I call it hipster lay-by <laughs> platforms that have emerged. Are they having an impact? So let's have a look at this article written by Gerard Coburn from news.com.au. So credit card debt has reached its lowest level in more than 15 years as Aussies continue to turn away from high interest products. So, I mean, is this the, the end of the credit card? We're seeing the emergence of, well, interest, no interest credit cards, but then they charge you a fee every month that pretty much works out to be an interest. But still, we're seeing a move away from credit cards. Do you actually have one? Do you have a credit card? Did you, you know, have you managed to punch through it? And get decimated or are you just struggling or just decided that's it now i'm going to get through that before we go any further let us know in the comments your success stories or some hints and tips because i want to go through some a bit later and while you do that i'll have a shine of coffee ah oh, it's good so credit card debt has hit its lowest level in more than 15 years with australians switching to cheaper lending services such as buy now pay later <clears throat> Figures from the Reserve Bank of Australia show outstanding amounts on credit cards have fallen to $20.6 billion, the lowest level since 2004. From the beginning of the pandemic, Australian credit card holders have wiped $6.3 billion, which is 23.5% reduction in the total amount owing across all accounts. So you got to feel sorry for those poor credit card companies that are losing all that money. But it's encouraging to see maybe people are waking up. Maybe people are realizing, you know, I don't want to be in debt. <clears throat> or, or as they're saying here, they're making that move to afterpay or to other services. According to the RBA, 13.1 million credit cards are in circulation, the lowest number since April 2008. Rate City Research Director Sally Tyndall said the amount being paid off per month was slowing since its peak in May when $1.6 billion was paid back. The August data shows Australians were wiping away $831 million in credit card debt. The number of credit card accounts is also plummeting as many people turn their backs on credit cards for good. Is that you guys? Let us know in the comments if you have actually done the cut. I mean, we decimated, our, we more than decimated, we pretty much paid off all of our credit cards and I still, I still have two. Uh, one for business and one for private, just out of convenience, to be honest, for making online purchases and those things. I haven't bothered to set up a debit credit card in one. I probably should. I probably should, but I am literally will make a transaction and then pay it instantly. So I'm just lazy. <laughs> and, I know that, and I'll go through here when we look at some of the, you know, the arguments for having a credit card, how that's probably costing me a little bit of money, but it's a decision about convenience. Providers know the glory days are over for credit cards. They're frantically trying to create new opportunities to challenge the buy now pay later industry, but it could be a little, it could be too little too late. And we're seeing that with their interest free credit cards, as I mentioned. Canstar finance expert Steve uh, Mickenberry said the pandemic had caused Australians to spend less and to be conscious about their debt levels while a high degree of uncertainty remained in the economy. 
Credit card balances continue to cascade during the pandemic, which is surprising during a period of heightened financial stress and a sign that Australians are building up a contingency for potential tougher times. Even if necessity might see some bounce back into debt, it is clear that the penny has dropped and people are looking for a way out of their credit card debt. Now, is this what I've been repeating in video after video about people just getting out of credit card debt? Or never again, never again. This is my what if moment. We saw the queues at Centrelink. We saw the people that just are living hand to mouth. Maybe it's realizing that keeping up the jo with the Joneses just ain't worth it. Mr. Mackenbecker said the early release of superannuation had also helped Australians get on top of their debt. The early release of super had put cash in the hands for some, and cardholders are making the logical and conservative decision to knock off credit card debt while they can. Now, that's it's not a bad thing if you got the $10,000 from your super and you used it to attack your credit card debt. That's not a bad thing at all if you didn't fall into the trap of getting a card and just racking it up again. That's the risk. Now, as we see here, private credit growth has, has plunged, has plunged, but is it shifting to afterpay? So what I thought we'd go through when I've you know, had to re-record again, so I'll undo what I said before. This is from the financial year results for afterpay. And they're an example, they're probably the best known, as I would call them, hipster lay-by companies. That is part of Australia's innovation for the world. And, you know, their sales, their underlying sales are up 112%. Their total income is up 103% to $502 million. Active customers are up 116%. Their net transaction margin is up 110%. Their active merchants is up 72%. And their gross, gross losses has improved by 24%. So Afterpay is one of those just success stories that we're seeing here in Australia with the share market. Did you go? Did you manage to get in the IPO, guys? Did you manage to get in the IPO? Let us know. So, you know, the argument that, well, some of that private credit is now being shifted to buy now, pay, the buy now, pay later sector away from expensive credit cards does seem to make sense. And what we have here, this is just you know, from Commonwealth Bank, I brought up some of the credit cards that they have. Because think about it, you've got, you know, 13.24%, 19.74% per annum interest. Then on top of that, you got all these other fees and charges, 20.24%. 20, so you can see why, and these are the low fee cards, you can see why people want to get away from these things. So let's say you've, you're watching this, you've got a credit card, and you want to look at a strategy of how to pay it off how to pay it off. And I thought, you know, you know, attack it, attack it with lots of well, smaller payments, even to begin with, even to begin with. So here we go. I'm saying if you pay, well, not just 10, but if you manage to pay $100 a week, or if you manage to reduce your spending on your credit card by $100 a week, that can have an impact. So say you're paying 14, you've got 14.5% interest, you know, $100 a week per annum, that's 14 point fourteen dollars fifty so to divide that over a year say if you know you you racked it up over a year and i'm not i'm not worrying about compounding interest that'll just add to it if you have that hundred dollars and it takes you a year to pay off that hundred dollars and you do that for a year for a hundred dollars every week that's seven hundred and fifty four dollars that's just gone that you just paid an in interest and that's a decent amount of money so if you reduce your spending on the credit card buy that, you know, you'll save that amount of interest. Lots of smaller attacks, you know, smaller payments. Pay $5 here, pay $10 here. You want to get the snowball going. You want to start with just, you know, a small payment, a small payment, and then it starts growing bigger and bigger and bigger and you attack it. One of the strategies is if one of the strategies is if you've got several debts, the snowball strategy is to take the smaller one first pay that off, throw everything you can at that one, and then hit the next biggest one, throw everything you can at that one. And then finally, the third biggest one, throw everything at that there. Now, this may not be the smartest way to do it, because say this little guy here, you know, we'll color him in yellow, he only has an interest rate of 5%, whereas this one has a higher interest rate. The strategy is not to do the sensible thing is to attack the uh, more cost of, or to get your value for money, 
paying off the smaller interest rate, the higher interest rate first, it's to get the snowball, the psychological benefit of paying off one thing after another after another. But then you might be saying, well, Florian, I get credit card rewards. You know, why, you know, I'm working the system, I'm getting these rewards. Now you've got to think, okay, sure, they get reward points and all of these things, but you've got to understand is, well, is your time worth it for the rewards that you get? What did you get? Maybe a fuel voucher card or some other stuff like that. To be honest, I've abandoned. I hadn't I haven't even bothered with the rewards because it always it was always crap. It's usually stuff I didn't want. You know, let let me know, guys. Are, are you are you know actually making money off the rewards? Because you've got to remember there is another there is another cost associated with credit cards, and this is this is the big one. It's the transaction fees, the credit card processing fees that are passed on to you. So say you have, say you have a Visa or Mastercard, and you're paying, you know, the one point two nine percent credit card fee. So thousand dollars a month, you're spending twelve dollars and ninety cents in just transaction fees every month, every month. And let's say you make that over, you know, ten transactions, so you charge another five cents. That's another fifty cents. So the hidden interest, as I would call it, that you're charging or that you're being charged, is thirteen dollars and 40 cents a month so this is on this is before all of the other interest because remember you're going to get charged what 20 percent or 14 percent interest on this as well then then if you times that over you know if you do that every week every week that 13 dollars. so if you're spending a thousand bucks a week on a credit card which may not be that you know may not be that much if you're just using it for your shopping for your petrol for all of your other expenses that's nearly 700 dollars a year that you're burning through on that. Now, if you're only doing it once every month, that's not not that bad. You know, if we'll do it here, we'll do, what is it, 13.4, 13.4 times 12. And this is one note, by the way. You know, that's still $160 a year of money that you're paying for the convenience of using these cards. Now, if you if you are aware of that, you understand that you're doing that, and you, you're happy to pay for that convenience, that's fine, that's no problem. But you just need to understand that they're not your friends. They're there to make money. And that $700 every year, if you're spending 1000 bucks, that could be going into shares that you could buy in MasterCard or in Visa. Or if you had to chuck that in, let's say, you know, you bought, let's see, 700 shares of... Of uh, oh no, what was the uh, Afterpay IPO? Let's have a look at that. I'll look at that Afterpay IPO price. Okay, it was a dollar a share. So let's say you took that seven hundred dollars and put that put that into because this is the opportunity cost. This is an important thing to calculate with regards to uh, any financial decision you make. So say we had that you know rounded up seven hundred bucks. You bought seven hundred shares in afterpay. And I know the minimum, you know, in the IPO, you need to invest like 2000, but we'll just say for this argument. So let's look at the afterpay share price right now. Afterpay share price is $84 and 84 cents. So if you put that $700 into there, into there, and we times it by 84 on 84, you, that could have been worth $60,000. Okay, now you may not necessarily have done that, but you've got to remember that there are opportunity costs to all of these things and they all add up. If you worry about, you know, oh, I'm not worrying about that little monthly expense. I'm not worried about that little purchase there. It doesn't matter. You know, it, it, uh, you'd, be, you'd be shocked at how much it all adds up. I know when, when I really, when I finally had a break, when we had, you know, work slowed down a couple of years ago and I could just look at everything in the business and I saw how many of these little little things that we thought when were a necessity were just siphoning money out, and it just adds up really quick. So you've got to think about that. All of these conveniences and costs that you're spending, that's well, reducing your ability to deploy resources for opportunities. And I know Afterpay, I mean, that's an insane share price. I remember when I was doing some Ubering years ago, and I was talking to one guy, uh, this is back in 2017 when Bitcoin was going crazy and he was sharing a story of how he used Bitcoin to, to buy like a pizza or something. Or no, <laughs> I think he bought some marijuana. And uh, I said, mate, that's probably the most expensive smoke you've ever had in your life. And he goes, yeah, it was because he, he used it years ago. And that was just when it hit $20,000.
So just, just think about that. All of these little costs and charges, these little hidden, hidden things, think of that as an opportun- uh, there's an opportunity cost associated with it. And you never know. It may be the next afterpay. But what about, what about these no interest credit cards that we're seeing as well? Now, I've done videos on these and I will link to them up above, guys. I suggest you check them out because they've got monthly fees. They've got monthly fees. So it's the same thing. They're just trying to jump onto the afterpay bandwagon and attack it. So what do you think, guys? Do you still have a credit card? Have you made some you know, fantastic investments after you've gotten savings from getting off these products? Or are you just using cash the old-fashioned way or sticking to your FPOS? As always, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Please share your suggestions with viewers down below in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I created, there are a few ways you can. Join us on YouTube or Patreon. Support us using any of our affiliate links. Buy a merch from Teespring or Heiser Says, or use Gold Pass or PayPal. Take care. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.